Good evening, students. Okay, yes, a very good evening to all of you. So, the number of participants is very less. Uh, day by day, it is decreasing. And it is more so with the, the evening's class. If it is in the morning, maybe uh, some more would have attended the class. Okay. Okay. Let us start uh, today's class. Again, I welcome all of you for uh, today's mathematics class. The topic that we are discussing today is limits. Already we have solved quite a few problems on limits. Let's continue our discussion on limits. Okay. So look at the, uh, this question, question number 72 here. Limit extends to infinity x bar 3 by 2 into square root of x cubed plus 1 minus q root of x cubed minus square root of x cube minus one is. Yes. So as it is, if I apply the limit, this will be infinity, this will be infinity minus infinity, it is an indeterminate form. So now let us uh, rationalize this. Okay. Let me rationalize this. Limit extends to infinity x to the power three by two into we have root of x cube plus one minus root of x cube minus one. We'll multiply and divide by root x cube plus one plus root x cube minus one. Root x cube plus one plus root x cube minus one. Okay. So that is equal to limit extends to infinity x to the power 3 by 2 into so look at this numerator it looks like a minus b into a plus b which is a square minus b square so that will give you x cube plus 1 minus of x cube minus whole divided by root of x cube plus 1 plus root of x cube minus. So in the numerator here, uh, x cube, x cube gets cancelled. So then we are left with limit extends to infinity x to the power 3 by 2 into, see here x cube plus 1 minus x cube plus 1. So x cube, x cube gets cancelled. 1 plus 1 will become 2 divided by. Here root of x cube plus 1 is there. I will take x cube as common. If I take x cube as common, okay, then that x cube, we take it outside the root. Okay, I'll write one more step here. x cube into 1 plus 1 by x cube mine plus root. Here also, I will take x cube as common. Then you'll have 1 minus 1 by x cube. This x cube, I will take it outside the root. When x cube goes outside the root, it will become x to the power 3 by 2. In both the terms, you will get uh, x power 3 by 2. That x power 3 by 2, I will take common. Okay. So, x power 3 by 2, I will take common. Then, you will have root of 1 plus 1 by x square plus root of 1 minus 1 by x square. Okay. Now, I can cancel this x power 3 by 2. Okay. So this x power 3 by 2 gets cancelled. And as x tends to infinity, 1 by x square will tend to 0. So this will be 0. This will be 0. We'll have 2 in the numerator. In the denominator, root of 1 plus 0 plus root of 1 minus 0. Root 1 is 1. Here root 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So that will give you 2 by 2, which is equal to 1. Okay. So 1 is the answer, which is the fourth option. So then, let's have a look at this question. 75th question. Limit extends to infinity x into tan 1 by x is equal to. Limit extends to infinity x tan.
tan 1 by x is equal to. I can write like this. Limit x tends to infinity tan 1 by x divided by 1 by x. This x I am taking to the denominator. When x goes to the denominator, it will become 1 by x. Now, as uh, x tends to infinity, what will happen to 1 by x? When x tends to infinity, 1 by x will tend to 0. When x approaches infinity, 1 by x will approach 0. So now this problem is as good as limit theta tends to 0, sine theta, by, sorry, tan theta by theta. Limit theta tends to 0, tan theta by theta is equal to 1. So limit x tends to infinity tan 1 by x divided by 1 by x will be equal to 1. So that 1 is the answer, which is the second option. Next question, question 78. Limit n tends to infinity, n by n plus 1 whole power n. n by n plus 1 whole power n. Okay. So, in order to evaluate this limit, I would like to use this formula. Uh, earlier, uh, while discussing synopsis, I have given you this formula. Limit n tends to infinity. 1 plus 1 by n whole power n is equal to e. Limit n tends to infinity 1 plus 1 by n whole power n is equal to e. So there I had told you that whatever we have here, its reciprocal should be there in the power. Here you have 1 by n, so the power should be n. Okay. So in in that way, here, I will write this numerator as n plus 1 minus 1 divided by n plus 1 whole power n. I am adding 1 and subtracting 1. Okay? Then, that's equal to limit n tends to infinity. I will split this as n plus 1 by n plus 1 minus 1 by n plus 1 n plus 1 by n plus 1 will give you 1 minus 1 by n plus 1 to the power n. Okay. So, now you see I have told you that here if you have 1 by n, then the power should be n. It's a reciprocal should be there in the power. Here 1 by n is there. 1 plus 1 by n is there. So, the reciprocal is n. Then it will be e. Now, here it is 1 by minus 1 by n plus 1 is there. Therefore, the power should be minus of n plus 1. In that way, we have to write that power. So, for that, what adjustments should we make here? What alterations should we make here? We want minus of n plus 1. So, what do I do is, I will write like this. Mm, minus of minus of n plus 1 n plus 1 minus 1 n plus 1 minus of n plus 1 you want right so okay I'll write like this minus of n plus 1 plus 1 this is n plus 1 plus 1. Now, if you simplify, observe what we are going to get. If you simplify here, minus n minus 1 plus 1. So, 1 1 gets cancelled, minus 1 will remain. Minus n will remain. That's not what we want into what we have. Minus 1. Just observe this power here. I am writing like this. Minus of n plus 1 plus 1. This into minus 1. So, this on simplification will give you minus n minus 1 plus 1 into minus 1. Here, 1 1 gets cancelled. Minus 1 into minus n will give you plus n. So, that plus n only, I am writing like this. Minus of n plus 1 plus 1 into minus 1. Okay. So, now, if I do so, then further, I can write like this. It is equal to. It 
limit n tends to infinity 1 minus 1 by n plus 1 whole power minus of n plus 1 into minus 1 into 1 minus 1 by n plus 1 whole power minus 1. It is like uh, x power m plus n. x to the power m plus n can be written as x to the power m into x to the power n. So here uh, n minus of n plus 1 into minus 1. Uh, then plus 1 into minus 1. That I have written. Okay. So now as n tends to infinity, this much will become e. Limit n tends to infinity 1 minus 1 by n plus 1 uh, whole power minus of n plus 1. This much will become e. So then you have the power as minus 1 there. So you get uh, e to the power minus 1 into as n tends to infinity this uh, 1 by n plus 1 will become 0. So then you have 1 minus 0 to the power minus 1. 1 minus 0 is 1. 1 power minus 1 is 1 only. So the answer is e to the power minus 1 or you can also say 1 by e, 1 by e, which is the third option. I think uh, somehow I have a feeling that most of you have not understood. Eh? Am I right? Did you understand this? Okay. So, no, sir as expected. Okay. So, hardly one or two saying are saying yes, sir. So, I um, will give you another formula. Okay. Don't worry. I will give you one more uh, method for this problem. I need some space. Okay. Here it is away. I will give you one formula. Then say um, uh, whether you can use this formula. Okay. Now, suppose, let us say you have a limit x tends to infinity f of x to the power g of x. If I take uh, f of x, uh, if it is of the form limit x tends to infinity f of x to the power g of x, then suppose if we directly apply the limit, uh, suppose if it is of the form 1 power infinity. 1 power infinity is also an indeterminate form. If it is of this form, if it is of the form 1 power infinity, okay. So if it is of the form 1 power infinity, then we can write this as, if it is of the form 1 power infinity, then we can write this as, uh, this will be equal to e to the power limit x tends to infinity g of x into f of x minus 1. Okay. So, when we apply the limit for this limit x tends to infinity f of x to the power g of x. If we apply the limit directly, suppose if you are getting it in the form of 1 power infinity, then this limit is equal to e to the power limit x tends to infinity g of x into f of x minus 1. Okay. So, it is there in our uh, synopsis also. Let me explain. Now, I have opened this uh, limits sheet. Is it visible? Uh, no, what I had sent earlier. Is this visible? I think no. No. Okay. Right. Right. Just uh, Uh, now is it visible? Here we have mathematics volume 2, etc. Is it visible now this screen PDF? Yes, fine. Okay, so now you just observe here. If limit x tends to infinity f of x to the power g of x is of the form 1 power infinity, then Limit x tends to infinity f of x to the power g of x is equal to e power limit f of x limit e power limit x tends to a g of x into f of x minus 1. Okay. So if limit x tends to a f of x to the power g of x is of the form 1 power infinity 
then limit extends to a f of x to the power g of x is equal to e power limit extends to a g of x into f of x minus 1. Okay, so this formula I would like to use. Now, if I use this formula here for this particular problem, so how this can be used? Let us uh, just see that first. Limit n tends to infinity n by the formula n by n plus one whole power n, right? Okay. So now, here uh, you forget about this n for a while. Forget this. Uh, you just look at n by n plus 1. If I directly apply the limit, observe that both are polynomials of the same degree. Both are polynomials of degree 1. When both are polynomials of the degree 1 and if this n is tending to infinity, then the value of this limit is uh, highest coefficient of highest power of uh, n or x in this case, in a case where uh, x is tending to infinity. Here, uh, it's a polynomial in n, so n tending to infinity you have. So, when limit n tends to infinity, if you have polynomials, numerator is a polynomial of degree 1 here and denominator is also a polynomial of degree 1. When both are polynomials of the same degree, then the value of that limit is equal to the coefficient of highest power of n in the numerator divided by coefficient of highest power of n in the, one, n in the denominator, which means 1 by 1 you get. Okay. So, this will be 1, but the power will become infinity. So, 1 by 1 is 1, 1 power infinity. So, what I am trying to tell you is that it is of the form 1 power infinity and you have f of x to the power g of x. In this case, n, f of n to the power g of n. Okay. So, uh, when you have f of x to the power g of x and when we apply the limit, if it is of the form 1 power infinity, then we use this formula. We write this limit as e power limit extends to infinity g of x into f of x minus 1. So, if we use that, now g of x is n by... Uh, g of x is n, f of x is n by n plus 1. If we use this formula, then this will be equal to e to the power limit n tends to infinity g of x. g of x means n. In the f of x minus 1. What is f of x? Uh, n by n plus 1 minus 1. Let us simplify this. Okay. This is equal to e to the power limit n tends to infinity n into, I'll take LCM, LCM is n plus 1. Numerator will be n minus n minus 1. Here n, n gets cancelled. e power limit n tends to infinity. So n, n gets cancelled minus 1 is there. n into minus 1, that will be minus 1 divided by n plus 1. e power limit n tends to infinity minus n by n plus 1. Minus n by n plus 1, that will give you minus 1 as n tends to infinity. So, the answer is e power minus 1, which is nothing but 1 by e. Okay. So, this is another way of solving this problem. If you know this formula, this is perhaps uh, the easier method than that one. Okay. Now, Ismail is saying that, sir, by taking n common, we can solve. No, you cannot. By taking n means, n common means here you can take n common and cancel it. Uh, then that power n will remain as it is, right? So, after cancelling, you will get 1 by 1 plus 1 by n. Uh, whole power n. Ah, yeah, we can. Okay, so you're right. Limit n tends to infinity, 1 power n divided by 1 plus 1 by n whole power n. Okay, so before applying the limit only, 1 power n can be written as 1 divided by 1 plus 1 by n whole power n. As n tends to infinity, 1 will remain as 1. Divided by 1 plus 1 by n whole power n can be written as e. Okay, you're right. 1 by e. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, this is uh, the easiest method among all the three. Okay. So, you follow this method. See, uh, what I did is I have taken n as common here in the denominator. n into 1 plus 1 by n. Then that n, this n gets cancelled. This will be 1 power n divided by 1 plus 1 by n whole power n. Then uh, uh, 1 power n before applying the limit only. So before applying the limit only, 1 power n can be written as 1. Then uh, here denominator 1 plus 1 by n whole power n is nothing but uh, e. So the answer is 1 by e. However, nothing wrong with this other methods also. They are somewhat complicated. But you remember this formula. This is very useful. Okay. So 
this is very useful it is applicable only if it is of the form uh, uh, 1 power infinity if it is of the form 1 power infinity then only this is useful okay next limit extends to infinity 3x minus 4 divided by 3x plus 2 to the power x plus 1 by 3. Again, for this, I will give you how many methods do you want? Okay, only one I will give. Huh? So, now you observe, you forget about this power for a while, forget about this. You just think of 3x minus 4 by 3x plus 2. If you directly apply the limit here, infinity by infinity, okay. This is a polynomial of degree 1. A denominator is also a polynomial of degree 1. When both are polynomials of the same degree, then the value of that limit is equal to the coefficient of uh, highest power of x in the numerator divided by the coefficient of highest power of x in the denominator. So it is 3 by 3, that means 1. And power x plus 1 by 3 as extends to infinity. Infinity plus 1 is infinity only. Infinity by 3 is infinity. Okay. So it will be of the form 1 power infinity. Right. So now it is of the form limit extends to infinity f of x to the power g of x. And, and the pen has stopped working now. Okay, this may go off. Please stay online. Yes, as expected. Okay. Huh. Okay. Is it visible now? Can you see limit extends to infinity f of x to the power g of x? Students, is it visible? Yes. Okay, fine. I now concentrate. Say limit extends to infinity f of x to the power g of x. It is of the form 1 power infinity now. When it is of the form 1 power infinity, observe this will be 1 power is infinity. When it is of the form 1 power infinity, we can write this as e to the power limit x. Uh, see, here I have taken extends to infinity in this problem. But not, this is applicable even when you have extends to a also. Need not be infinity. It can be anything. Okay. So, in general, e power limit extends to a f of g of x into f of x minus 1. Okay, so at this moment, you just remember this formula. From where did we get this formula? That is altogether a different story that uh, yeah, many of you may not understand. So I will explain that only for uh, J main students. Eh? Now, as far as it is concerned, just remembering this formula is enough. Okay, so later on uh, for J students, I'll explain later. Okay, so one it is of the form. When we directly apply the form, uh, uh, apply the limit, we will get one power infinity which means this can be written as e power limit extends to in a g of x into f of x minus. So in this case, what happens? This will be equal to e to the power limit extends to infinity. Now g of x, g of x means x plus 1 by 3 into f of x minus 1. That means 3x minus 4 divided by 3x plus 2 f of x minus 1. Okay, then this is equal to e to the power limit extends to infinity x plus 1 by 3 into here 3x plus 2. This will be 3x minus 4 minus 3x minus 2 minus 3x minus 2. Here 3x, the 3x gets cancelled. So, this is equal to e to the power limit extends to infinity. All this is happening in the power only. Okay. So, this size should have been a bit smaller. x plus 1 by 3 into here uh, 3x, 3x gets cancelled. Minus 6 divided by 3x plus 2. Okay. So, now 3 ones are 3 twos are there. So, minus 2 will remain. This is equal to e to the power limit extends to infinity. 
minus 2 into x plus 1. That will give you minus 2x minus 2. Divide by this 3 we have cancelled. 3x plus 2. Now observe this. Observe this much only. Limit extends to infinity minus 2x minus 2 divided by 3x plus 2. So it is a polynomial. Both numerator and denominators are polynomials of the same degree. Both are polynomials of degree 1. So the value of that limit is coefficient of x in the numerator divided by coefficient of x in the denominator. So that means you will get e to the power minus 2 by 3. That's the answer. e power minus 2 by 3, which is the first option. Okay. Students, did you understand this solution? Yes. Okay, everybody is saying yes, sir, except perhaps one or two. Okay, those who are having it out, please stay back in the meeting. After the meeting, I will explain. Now, look at this uh, next question, question number 81. Limit y tends to infinity 1 plus x by y whole power 2y. 1 plus x by y whole power 2y. Okay. So here you observe y is tending to infinity. That means x is a constant here. X should be treated as constant. Only y is changing to infinity. Okay. So when y tends to infinity, for this problem, I will give you two methods. Whichever is easy, you follow that. Okay. First method, like what did I do now? If I directly apply the limit as y tends to infinity x by y, that will tend to 0. x will remain as it is 1 by y. When y tends to infinity, 1 by y will tend to 0. So 1 plus 0 means 1 here. And power is infinity. Power when uh, y tends to infinity, 2 into infinity, that will be infinity only. So it's of the form 1 power infinity. When it is of the form 1 power infinity, you can use that formula. That formula says it is equal to e to the power limit y tends to infinity g of x that means 2y into f of x minus 1, 1 plus x by y minus 1 okay so that means here what happens 1 1 gets cancelled y y also gets cancelled e power limit y tends to infinity 1 1 gets cancelled then y y gets cancelled 2x will remain when y tends to infinity what happens to x x will remain as x only that will not go anywhere when y goes to infinity, x will remain as x. So, you will get the answer as e power 2x, which is the first option. This is one method of solving, one way of solving. I'll give you another method. You have a limit x, y tends to infinity, right? y tends to infinity. How last answer came? See, when y tends to infinity, x will remain as x only x will not change. So, 2 will not change because they will be treated as constants. Okay, when y is tending to infinity means y is the variable. y is changing. So, x will remain as x. So, limit y tends to infinity 2x will be equal to 2x only. Hence, the answer is e power 2x. Okay. So, now, here you have limit y tends to infinity 1 plus x by y. Right? Whole power 2y. I told you, when you have whatever you have here, its reciprocal should be there in the power. Okay? So, then we can write that as y. Then, then we can write that as e. So, now you have x by y here. In the power, I will write y by x into 2x. Okay? So, you just observe what I did is, I had that 2y in the power. That 2y, I wrote it as y by x into 2x. Okay, so I am writing y 2y as y by x into 2x. y by x into 2x. Okay, so now x x get. If you cancel this x x, if you cancel this x x, you will have that 2y. I have not changed its value. Okay, that 2y has remained as 2y only. So now as y tends to infinity, this much will become e. Okay, limit y tends to infinity 1 plus x by y whole power y by x. The formula says limit n tends to infinity 
1 plus 1 by n whole power n is equal to e. So here x by y is there, its power is y by x, which is so therefore this will be equal to e and power 2x will remain e to the power 2x. Okay. So now which method is easy? First one or the second? Whether first method is easy or uh, second method is easy? Both are easy. Yes. Okay. Thank you. First, first. Okay. Both are easy, but uh, you should not say neither is easy. Okay. So, uh, anyway, whichever is uh, easy for you that you can follow. Let's go to the next question. Limit n tends to infinity cos x by n whole power n. Limit n tends to infinity cos x by n whole power n. If I directly apply the limit as n tends to infinity, x by n, so x into 1 by n. So when n tends to infinity means 1 by n will become 0. 0 into x, that will be 0. Then you have cos 0. Cos 0 is 1. And power is n there. And when it tends to infinity, it will be 1 power infinity. So as it is, if you apply the limit, you are going to get 1 power infinity. Therefore, I can use that formula. What does that say? That formula says this is equal to e to the power limit x tends to a. In this case, limit n tends to infinity. g of x, which is n, into f of x minus 1. f of x means cos x by n minus 1. Okay, so now let us say how to evaluate this. This is equal to e to the power limit n tends to infinity cos x by n minus 1 divided by 1 by n. This n I have taken to denominator, it has become 1 by n. Now, if I directly apply the limit here as n tends to infinity, then when n approaches infinity, cos x by n will become 0, x by 1 will become 0 because when n tends to infinity, x by n becomes 0. This will be cos 0. Cos 0 is 1. 1 minus 1, 0. Numerator is 0. Denominator, when n tends to infinity, this 1 by n, that also becomes 0. So it is of the form 0 by 0. So whenever uh, 0 by 0 comes, then what comes to your mind, what should come to your mind is nothing but L hospital's rule. L hospital's rule we shall use now. Derivative of cos x by n. Mind you, here it is uh, n is the variable and not x. Okay. Here n is the variable. So derivative of cos x by n is minus sin x by n into the derivative of x by n. x should be treated as constant. Eh? So x into derivative of 1 by n, that is minus 1 by n square minus the derivative of 1, which is 0. Divided by what is there in the denominator? 1 by n we have its derivative. Derivative of 1 by n is minus 1 by n square. Derivative of 1 by n is minus 1 by n square. So this minus 1 by n square minus 1 by n square gets cancelled. So we are left with e power limit n tends to infinity minus x into sin x by n. So this minus 1 by n square we have cancelled. Now as n tends to infinity x by n will become 0. Okay. So sin x by n, sin x by n will become 0. This will be sin 0, sin 0 is 0. 0 into x, 0 into x is 0. So e power limit n tends to infinity. When n tends to infinity this will become 0, sin 0 is 0, 0 into x is 0 e power 0 we get. What is the value of e power 0? Which is 1. So 1 is the answer. Okay. Which is the third option. Okay. So look at the next question. Question number 85. If f of a is 2, f dash of a is 1, 
g of a is minus 1 j dash of a is 2 then limit extends to an a g of x f of a minus g of a f of x divided by x minus a yes if we directly apply the limit i mean wherever there is x if you replace with the a you are going to get uh, g of a into f of a minus g of a into f of a divided by a minus a g of a into f of a minus g of a into f of a that will be zero denominator a minus a which is also zero okay so that is also zero means zero by zero we can think of l hospitals rule okay l hospitals rule can be used so if you are using l hospital then this f of a and g of a are constants f of a means the value of f of x at x is equal to a it is a value so it is constant whereas f of x g of x they are the functions okay so this will be limit extends to a f of a into g dash of x derivative of g of x which g dash of x minus g of a into f dash of x derivative of f of x is f dash of x divided by derivative x minus a which is 1 derivative of x is 1 and derivative of a is 0 now apply the limit you are going to get f of a into g dash of a minus g of a into f dash of a now substitute the values what is f of a f of a they have given f of a is 2, f dash of a is 1, f of a is 2, they have given. What about a g dash of a? g dash of a is 2, g dash of a is also 2, okay. minus g of a into f dash of a, g of a is minus 1, f dash of a is 1, g of a is minus 1, f dash of a is 1, so 4 minus to minus 1, plus 1. Answer is five. Second option. Okay. So look here. We are asked to find out if f of a is two, f dash of a is one, g of a is minus one, g dash of a is two. We are asked to find out limit extends to a g of x f of a minus g of a into f of x divided by x minus a is equal. To so when you directly apply the limit, you are going to get uh, g of a into f of a minus g of a into f of a, that is zero. Denominator a minus a, that is also zero. So I'll use L hospitals rule here. While using L hospitals rule, you must note that f of a and g of a are constants. So differentiate f of a into derivative of g of x, which is g dash of x, minus g of a into derivative of f of x, which is f dash of x divided by the derivative of x minus a, which is 1. Okay, so when you apply the limit, you are going to get f of a into g dash of a minus g of a into f dash of a. Those values are given, just uh, substitute and simplify, you will get the answer. Okay. Let's have a look at uh, question number 87. f of x is equal to x square minus 3x plus 5. Then limit extends to 2 f of x minus f of 2 divided by x minus 2. Okay. So you substitute what is f of x and what is uh, f of 2. What is f of x? Uh, f of x is nothing but uh, x square minus 3x plus 5 minus f of 2. f of 2 is 4 minus 6 plus 5 divided by x minus 2. I have not uh, applied limit or I have not used L hospital zone so far. I am just substituting and I am just writing what is f of x and what is f of 2. Now x square minus 3x, here you get uh, 9 minus 6, 3, 5 minus 3, 2. x square minus 3x plus 2 divided by x minus 2. If I directly apply the limit as x tends to 2, this will give you 4 minus 6 plus 2, that is 0. Denominator 2 minus 2, that is also 0. 0 by 0 is an indeterminate form. Okay. 
so it is an indeterminate form so use l hospital should be 2x minus 3 divided by the derivative of x minus 2 is 1 apply the limit as x tends to 2 2 into 2 4 minus 3 4 minus 3 is equal to 1 1 is the answer this is one way of doing it another way is earlier while while explaining differentiability i have told you that uh, limit extends to c c f of x minus f of c divided by x minus c this is equal to f dash of c so limit extends to 2, f of x minus f of 2 divided by x minus 2 is nothing but uh, f dash of 2 f dash of 2 means uh, differentiate f dash of x differentiate f of x you get f dash of x in that you put x equal to 2 so f dash of x is equal to 2x minus 3 so f dash of 2 is equal to 2 into 2 4 minus 3 which is equal to 1 in this way also the given problem can be solved okay next question 88th question for x belongs to r limit extends to infinity x minus 3 divided by x plus 2 whole power x is equal to here if i directly apply the limit x minus 3 by x plus 2 directly apply the limit infinity by infinity uh, to the power infinity now you just have a look at uh, don't worry about the power if you look at only x minus 3 by x plus 2 there if i am applying the limit as x tends to infinity there both are polynomials of the same degree both are polynomial of degree 1 so when both are polynomials of the same degree then the value of that will be the coefficient of highest power of x in the numerator divided by the coefficient of highest power of x in the denominator so there the coefficient of highest power of x in the numerator is 1 and denominator also 1 1 by 1 it will be 1 and the power as x tends to infinity power will be infinity so it is of the form 1 power infinity when it is of the form 1 power infinity you know the formula it is equal to e to the power limit x tends to infinity g of x g of x is x into f of x minus 1 that means x minus 3 by x plus 2 minus 1 that's equal to e to the power limit x tends to infinity x into Here x plus two, x minus three minus x minus two. So x x gets cancelled. Minus three minus two. That should give us minus five. So e power limit extends to infinity. Here x x gets cancelled. Minus three minus two is minus five into x. That is minus five x divided by x plus two. Apply the limit as x tends to infinity minus five x by x plus two. Now both are polynomials of the same degree, so the coefficient of x divided by the coefficient of x in the denominator is the answer. E to the power minus five by one that means minus five. E to the power minus five is the answer. Okay, so here is a doubt. How, sir? How it is in the form of one power infinity? Observe, x minus. If I give you this, only this much limit extends to infinity x minus three by x plus two. How will you solve? You will identify that both are polynomials of the same degree. This is a polynomial of degree one. This is also a polynomial of degree one. So coefficient of highest power of x in the numerator divided by coefficient of highest power of x in the denominator. That should give you one by one. Okay, so this is equal to one, and the power uh, will become infinity, extending to infinity. So it is of the form of one power infinity. This is one way of doing it. Or another method is divide both the numerator and denominator by x. That will give you one minus three by x divided by one plus two by x. Now, when x tends to infinity. When x tends to infinity, three by x tends to zero, two by x also tends to zero. So one by one will give you one, and the power is x. As x tends to infinity, it will be in the form one power infinity. 
Okay, so uh, sir, when we have to use this formula, you have to use this formula only if it is of the form one power infinity. Okay, so Akshay, is it clear now how we get one power infinity here? Akshay and Dr. Deepak, no, not Dr. P.S. Deepak. Okay. Limit one, how infinity? Limit one is not infinity. Power x is there. See, this much, this base is there now. x minus 3 by x plus 2. As x tends to infinity, this will become 1. And power, there is x here. You are taking x to infinity. So that power x will become infinity. Okay. So let's have a look at this question. 89th question. Let f of 2 is equal to 4. f dash of 2 is equal to 4. Then limit x tends to 2. x into f of 2 minus 2 into f of x divided by x minus 2 is. Okay. So if I directly apply the limit as x tends to 2, this will give you 2 into f of 2 minus 2 into f of 2 divided by 2 minus 2. 2 into f of 2 minus 2 into f of 2, that will be 0. 2 minus 2, that will also be 0. So this is uh, an indeterminate form. That means uh, 0 by 0 form. If it is 0 by 0 form, then we can think of L hospital show. So differentiate this. Uh, here, x into f of 2. In this, f of 2 is constant. Uh, it will remain as it is. Derived of x is 1 minus 2 into f of x. Derivative of f of x will become f dash of x divided by x minus 2 is there whose derivative is 1. Okay. Apply the limit now. f of 2 minus 2 into f dash of 2. This is what we get when we apply the limit. Substitute what is f of 2? 4. f dash of 2 is also 4. So that will give you 4 minus 8, which is equal to minus 4. Okay. Minus 4, that is the third option, is the correct answer. Okay. Let's have a look at question number 90. It is a problem on continuity. The function f of x is equal to x tan 2x divided by sin 3x into sin 5x for x not equal to 0 and it is k for x is equal to 0 is continuous at x equal to 0 then f of 0 is equal to see they have already mentioned that this function is continuous at x equal to 0 so how this function is defined let me write it in another way f of x is equal to x tan 2x divided by sin 3x sin 5x for x not equal to 0 and k for x is equal to 0. This is how this function is defined. And they have mentioned that it is continuous at x equal to 0. By definition of continuity, to say that a function is continuous at x equal to 0, we can write limit x tends to 0 f of x is equal to f of 0. Limit x tends to 0 f of x is equal to f of 0. Okay. So, since it is continuous at x equal to 0, we can write in this one. Now, limit x tends to 0 f of x, f of x, when x approaches 0, x is not equal to 0. So, what is f of x now? x into tan 2x divided by sin 3x into sin 5x is equal to f of 0. Okay. So, you know how to evaluate this limit. Directly, you can write 1 into 2 divided by 3 into 5. When you have a linear function, then a tan, a sin, a, any of those, sin, a tan, and linear. Then directly we can write the coefficients in this way. 1 into 2 divided by 3 into 5. That will be f of 0. So f of 0 is equal to 2 by 15. 
2 by 15 is the answer. Is it not visible, this screen? Students, can you hear me? Yes, yes, visible also, you can hear also, fine, okay. Okay, fine. So here, uh, I think you have understood that x tan to x by sine three x. Actually, what you should do is, uh, actual method is, uh, x into tan 2x by 2x into 2x limit uh, x tends to 0 divided by here uh, sine 3x is there by 3x into 3x into there you have sine 5x which can be written as sine 5x by 5x into 5x as x approaches 0 tan 2x by 2x becomes 1 sin 3x by 3x becomes 1, sin 5x by 5x becomes 1, then x, 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 x gets cancelled. So 1 into 2 is 2 divided by 3 into 5, which is 15. Okay, so the answer is 2 by 15. Why we have equated as x equal to k? They have given, in the definitional, they have given, observe, the function f of x equal to this much for x not equal to 0 and it is equal to k for x is equal to 0. So it is equal to k. This question could also be asked as instead of asking then what is f of 0, they might ask you what is k. Right. Okay. Now, next question. The function f of x will step x at x equal 5 is left continuous, right continuous, continuous cannot be determined. See, already you know that it is discontinuous at uh, x equal to integers. Uh, step x is a very important function. At every integral point, it is discontinuous that you know, right? So look at the graph of uh, step x. Greatest integer function, right? This is the graph of step x. It is discontinuous at all integers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, 5 is here. Now, discontinuous option is not there. So, uh, let us see what happens. Left hand limit. Here, uh, what is f of 5? f of 5 is step of 5, which is equal to 5. Left hand limit is equal to limit extends to 5 minus f of x. That's equal to limit extends to 5 minus step x x approaches 5 from left side, eh? therefore step x value will be equal to 4. Then right hand limit is equal to limit x tends to 5 plus f of x. That is equal to limit x tends to 5 plus step x. x approaches 5 from right side. That means x may take the value 5.1, 5.05, 5.01, .05, etc. At all those points, step x value is equal to 5. Left hand limit is 4, right hand limit is 5. And therefore, they are not equal, hence limit does not exist. That's okay. Now, to say that uh, it is left continuous, we should have if uh, left hand limit is equal to functional value, then we say it is left continuous. Now, they are not equal, so it is not left continuous. But if right hand limit is equal to functional value, then we say that it is right continuous. Now it is true. Functional value is 5 and right hand limit is also 5. Right hand limit is equal to functional value. Therefore, it is right continuous. It is a right continuous only. It is not left continuous. It's only right continuous. And therefore, it is discontinuous. Okay. So to say that it is continuous, we should have left continuous as well as right continuous, okay? Now it's only right continuous, it's not continuous, therefore it is discontinuous, but discontinuous option is not there, hence we write uh, right continuous. Okay, next. The discontinuous points of f of x is equal to log one by log mod x. See, in general, you know, mod x is continuous everywhere. And log x is also continuous everywhere. 
then log mod x is the composition of these two functions if f is continuous g is continuous then f circle g g circle f they are all continuous functions which you know so log mod x is continuous everywhere but now the problem is that that log mod x is sitting in the denominator so this will be discontinuous whenever the denominator becomes zero so when will the denominator become zero log when the log of for what value of uh, x log x is zero so you know log 1 is equal to zero right so at x equal to 1 it is discontinuous at x equal to minus 1 also it is discontinuous now you might think sir log of minus 1 is not defined at all yes not defined but here you are talking about mod x right putting x is minus 1 modulus of minus 1 will give you 1 so you get log 1 log 1 is 0 1 by 0 not defined so it is discontinuous at that point so it is discontinuous at 1 as well as minus 1 also at 0 at 0 it is not defined at all so obviously it is discontinuous so it is discontinuous at 0 and plus or minus 1 okay these are the three points where it is discontinuous everywhere else it is continuous okay so students uh, with this i will stop uh, today's class the main reason is uh, the number of participants uh, as the time progresses uh, the number of uh, uh, students uh, participants is coming down drastically so i will not test your uh, test your patience further so i'll stop thank you uh, any doubts uh, if you have you please stay back and those who do not have any doubts uh, can leave the meeting Okay. All right. So last question. See, log x in general it is continuous everywhere. Sir, when level one will complete? Level one, how many problems are there? One twenty. Okay. Tomorrow I will complete. Okay. Eighty-two question. Eighty-two. Okay. Eighty-two. Just observe here. Limit n tends to infinity. Cos x by n whole power n is equal to. If I directly apply the limit one by n, n as infinity, then one by n. becomes zero one by infinity becomes zero so x by n is also zero cos zero you get cos zero is one and the power is infinity so one to the power infinity this is of the form one power infinity when it is of the form one power infinity then we use this formula e power limit extends to a g of x into f of x minus one that formula uh, we are using okay So limit n tends to infinity, g of x, g of x is n into f of x minus one cos x by n minus one. Now what did I do is I brought this n to denominator, so it has become one by n. Now if you apply here, you are apply the limit as n tends to infinity, then x by n will become zero. Cos zero is one, one minus one, uh, one minus one, you get zero. Divided by one by n uh, as n tends to infinity, one by n that will also become zero. Zero by zero is an indeterminate form. Therefore, uh, we can use L Hospital's rule. Differentiate this uh, derivative of cos x by n is minus sine x by n into the derivative of x by n, which is x into the derivative of one by n, which is minus one by n squared. Here, while differentiating, you must note that x is a constant, so that x will remain as it is. You have to differentiate with with respect to n. So, derivative of one by n, x by n, is x into minus one by n square. Denominator, the derivative of one by n, which is minus one by n square, minus one by n square, minus one by n square gets cancelled. So, you are left with the e power limit n tends to infinity minus sine x by n into x. So, that is written as minus x into sine x by n. Now, as n tends to infinity, x by n. Will tend to zero. So sine zero zero minus x into zero is zero. E power zero, which is equal to one. Okay. Then last question. You want me to explain again? Okay. 
So log zero is undefined. It is not zero. Yes, it is not defined. Log zero actually tends to minus infinity. Why it tends to minus infinity? Let me draw the graph of log x. This is the graph of log x. Now at zero, you just observe. At zero, it is not defined actually. So if you look at the right hand limit, when x comes to zero from right side, it will go towards minus infinity. Log zero is not defined. If a function is not defined at a point, obviously it is considered as it is not continuous at that point. For example, tan x at pi by two, tan x at pi by two is the graph of tan x at pi by two. Uh, we say it is not continuous at pi by two, right? Because tan pi by two is not defined. Okay. Similarly here, log zero is not defined. Therefore, it is discontinuous. The question is uh, where and all it is discontinuous. They have asked uh, log x, uh, whenever x is positive, it is uh, defined. So log mod x means obviously mod x is always positive. It is defined uh, everywhere apart from zero. Okay. But at one, what happens? Uh, log one you get, which is zero and denominator, it is sitting in the denominator. Therefore, uh, at x equal to one, it is discontinuous since the denominator is becoming zero. Okay. In other words, here f of 1 is not defined, f of minus 1 is not defined, f of 0 is also not defined. Hence, it is discontinuous at those three points. Question number 72, why did we not differentiate? 72. Uh, differentiation we cannot do here. Why? When we do differentiation, differentiation we do when we are using L hospitals rule. And when can we use L hospitals rule? L hospitals rule can be used only if you have 0 by 0 or infinity by infinity. If it is in this form, then only we can use L hospitals rule and not otherwise. Therefore, you cannot use L hospitals rule for this. I have rationalized this and simplified. Okay. So next question is, sir, how many questions in CET all together limits continuously derives and differentiability? How many? Okay. See, there is no general rule in CET like uh, PSA that uh, from this chapter, this many, this many, this many. Mm, no such pattern. We cannot tell exactly how many questions will be asked. So roughly on an average, uh, around three to four questions could be asked from limits. Uh, continuity and differentiation and of course differentiability. In question number 82, x equal 1, where 82, 82, x equal 1, I didn't get you. See, we are not differentiating with respect to x. So we are differentiating as n is the variable here. x should be treated as constant. We are differentiating with respect to n. So derivative of uh, 1 by n is minus 1 by n square. x will be a constant. Okay. Explain that e power formula once again. Okay, let me explain. Okay. Uh, let us say you have limit uh, x tends to a f of x to the power g of x. When we directly apply the limit, if it is becoming 1 power infinity, then this limit, limit x tends to a f of x to the power g of x is equal to e to the power limit x tends to a g of x into f of x minus 1 is the formula. If it is of the form f of x to the power g of x, and when we apply the limit, if it is becoming 1 power infinity, 1 power infinity is also an indeterminate form, just like uh, 0 by 0 or infinity by infinity. When we come across 0 by 0 or infinity by infinity, we use L hospitals rule. But when we come across this 1 power infinity, this indeterminate form, then we use this formula. Limit extends to a f of x to the power g of x is equal to e power limit extends to a g of x into f of x minus 1. Okay. 
video send sir okay i will send sir in 82 question number when we will differentiation the x value equal to 1 okay no 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 because uh, we are as i said uh, earlier we are differentiating with respect to n so uh, x will remain as constant <laughs> sorry uh 92 where is 92 92 okay the function f of x plus step x step x means greatest integer less than or equal to x greatest integer less than or equal to x means when x is between 0 and 1 step x is equal to 0 look at the graph when x is between 1 and 2 step x is equal to 1 step x is equal to greatest integer greatest integer less than or equal to x okay so greatest integer less than or equal to x means if i ask you what is step of 2 your answer is 2 step of 2.1 is 2 step of 1.99 is equal to 1 right all this is you know so now at x equal to 5 left hand limit means x is approaching 5 from left side x is very close to 5 x is very close to 5 but less than 5 means x may take the value 4.8 4.9 4.95 4.9 999 9, 9, at all those points step x value will be equal to 4 so left hand limit is 4 then right hand limit when x approaches 5 from right side x is very close to 5 but greater than 5 when x is greater than 5 step x value will be equal to When x is greater than five, x value may be equal to five point one, five point zero one, five point zero five, five point zero zero one, etc. At all those points, step x will be equal to five. So right hand limit is equal to five. Functional value, functional value means value of the function at that point. F of five, that is step of five. Step of five is equal to five. So right hand limit is equal to functional value. Then we say that it is. Uh, Uh, so it is uh, what did I say? It is right continuous. Okay, sir, explain sixty seventh question of yesterday's assignment. Where is sixty seventh question? Let me check. Sixty seven. Limit n tends to infinity to power n minus one by two power n plus. Do you want me to explain this? Okay, have a look at this. Limit n tends to infinity to power n minus one. If I directly apply the limit, I am going to get uh, infinity by infinity, which is an indeterminate form. Infinity by infinity, you will get, which is an indeterminate form. So infinity by infinity means you can even go for uh, L hospitals rule. If I use L hospitals rule, the derivative of two power n is two power n into log two divided by here also two power n into log two. Everything gets cancelled. So you have a limit uh, n tends to infinity one is equal to one. This is one way of solving the problem. Okay, there is another way also. That is, you have a limit uh, n tends to infinity to power n minus one divided by two power n plus one. I'll take two power n as common both in the numerator and in the denominator. If I take two power n in the, as uh, common, then you will have one minus one by two power n. Divided by two power n into one plus one by two power n. So as n tends to infinity, two power n gets cancelled. Okay, ah, uh, sorry, this two power n, two power n gets cancelled. As n tends to infinity, two power n becomes infinity. One by infinity will be zero. So you will get uh, one minus zero divided by one plus zero. That's equal to one by one, which is equal to one.
Okay, then so by this formula, can we take any value for A? Yes, Anaga, you can take any value for A. So in 93rd question, why not answer is A? Where is 93? Why not answer is A? No, where it is discontinuous, they ask the attitude is continuous. So it is log at x equal to 2, it is continuous. So uh, A is not the correct answer. Sixty third and sixtieth. These are from yesterday, I guess. Be shake. Okay, just a minute. Please wait. Sixty third question and sixtieth question. Sixtieth and sixty third. Okay, sixtieth. I'll explain here only. Two plus x. See, 2 plus x whole power 40 as x power infinity here, uh, x power 40 here, here x power 5. So answer will be 1 to the power 40 into 1 to the power 5 divided by minus 1 to the power 45. So 1 to the power 40 is 1, 1 power 5 is 1, together 1 divided by minus 1, answer is minus 1. Earlier I had explained one problem of the same kind in yesterday's class, right? Then 60th question. Where is the 60th question? 2 power 1 by n. Okay, very simple. As n tends to infinity, as n tends to infinity, 1 by n, as n tends to infinity, 1 by n will tend to 0. So this will become 2 power 0 minus 1 divided by 2 power 0 plus 1. 2 power 0 is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, divided by 1 plus 1, 2, 0 by 2 is equal to 0. That's the answer. Okay. Okay. So, Preeti, sir, I am confusing where we use log and where we use x power n. Okay. Where we use x power n, where we use absolute, where we use log and where we use x power n. Okay. So look here. If you have x power n, let us say if you have a function f of x here, this is a function. Base is a function. Power is a constant. Then use x power n. Okay, then if the base is a constant, power is a function, then use formula. Then formula for a power x. Formula for a power x is derivative a power x is a power x into log. Okay, keep this in mind. Function to the power constant, that means I'm talking about sine x whole power uh, 4. Uh, or uh, uh, log x whole power uh, 6, uh, root x whole power 5, etc. Function to the power a constant, uh, then it is of the form x power n. Uh, think of that formula. And then you have constant to the power function, that is 6 to the power sin x, uh, 4 to the power cos x, uh, 5 to the power log x, uh, etc. Then use the formula of a power x. Sir, 60th question, sir, explain. Just now I did that only. 60th question, I think I have explained that. Okay. Any constant to the power infinity is an indeterminate form. Okay. So, I think all of your doubts are clarified. Okay, students, with this, I will end uh, today's class. Thank you. We will meet again tomorrow. Okay. Hopefully, a bit earlier. Thank you.